Today we're going to talk all about chalk, or some people call it chalk pastels or soft pastels. I don't know. I just call it chalk, which I know is a little bit of a controversy in the art teacher world. Don't you just love it when the art teachers get all kind of crazy about different kind of names and stuff? It just shows how passionate we are about what it is that we do. I just call it chalk. So call it what you like. This is what I'm talking about. This guy right here, a big old box of chalk. And a lot of times I hear that teachers don't love using chalk or chalk pastels or whatever it's called with their students because it can be a little bit messy. And if not taught correctly, kids can end up with this stuff up to their elbows and a paper that is just completely demolished. And so is your chalk. So today we're going to talk about my bunches of tips on how to use chalk in your art room or in any room or at home, wherever. First things first, I've got myself a brand new box of chalk. Now let's just talk about chalk. When you purchase your chalk, you want to make sure that you definitely don't get sidewalk chalk. So scratch that off of your list unless you of course are planning on just using it outside on a sidewalk. Instead, make sure you're getting chalk that is great for your students to use. And you'll know whether or not it's great. If you've ever used chalk yourself and you've picked up a piece of chalk and it's really lightweight, then you know that it's just chalk full, see what I did there, of fillers. And the fillers are not good. It's just junk inside the chalk to try to get it to be a big enough piece of chalk for kids to use. All that to say is you want a chalk that's heavy and rich in pigment. And when you pick up that piece of chalk, you should be able to feel a little bit of weightiness. You should also be able to see it when you open up a box of chalk, all the beautiful color. Ooh, oh, oh. First thing you'll wanna do when you get yourself a brand new box of chalk is just like with watercolor paint, go ahead and take out the neutrals. I take out black, gray, brown, white, Everything that's left behind can fall into either the all warm or all cool category. But removing these colors is what I do first. Why? Darker colors will tend to make the entire chalk picture go a lot darker, especially black. You always want to use that color last. That's at least how we use it in my art room. We use it for a lot of outlining or even shading, but it is the last color we use so that doesn't make the entire picture look a little bit dark. So we want to keep those colors nice and bright, and to do that, we use this guy last. The other color that we remove is white. I do that because I like to have my students, just like when they're adding the dark, add a little bit of the light as the finishing final touches at the end. So these guys, they get sectioned in their own containers. Each one of them has their own containers that I put at that little place that I call the store. That way when my students are ready to go and get those colors, they're available for them, but they're not readily available in their tray. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away when I was this young and hopeful and optimistic art teacher, I thought that whatever way the kids found their art supplies, they would just magically put them back. <laughs> no. Because if you give kids chalk in a tray like this, nine times added nine, they're just going to chuck it back in the tray any which way. All that to say is I take all of my colors and I divide them warm versus cool. Dog dish. So these guys you can easily use because they're already divided. So let me show you how I set this up. I have about 10 of these trays. So my students share these with the student that they sit next to. So one of these trays between the two of them. Here's a closer look of what these guys would look like then. Why do I divide my chalk up from warm versus cool? Well, because I encourage my students to use colors that are analogous when they are picking colors to blend together when they're using their chalk. What does that mean? I'll show you. Between every couple of students, they're given one of these dog dishes of warm and cool colors and a color wheel. When my students are using chalk, for example, for my Sandra Silbert's wig project or for a fish project inspired by the same artist, they're given a color wheel and they are instructed to use about three colors per section of their artwork. Whether that section be large or small, they're only allowed to use about three colors within that section. And they can't just randomly pick any three colors that they want. They have to pick three colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. 
Those colors are analogous and when mixed together, they look beautiful. We do the same method when we're using chalk with liquid starch, which I'll share with you too, which is how we do our Dean Russo Tiger Project. And that is the same process. Three colors picked from beside each other on the color wheel. This is a little bit of what the setup between two students looks like. A lot of my students will begin by laying all of their colors out on the color wheel. This is just something that I gently encourage and they seem to enjoy doing it. It also helps them to get a jump start on the next step. And that is selecting their color. So they can pick any color on the color wheel and then they can pick one color or another on either side of that color two going in one direction, two going in the other direction. Let me blend those colors together and show you what that looks like and why these colors are great when mixing together. So these are two analogous colors going toward the cooler side of the color wheel when mixed together. They blend together beautifully. The next group of colors is going to be the ones on either side of the color wheel. And those colors are also going to look great. Oops, sorry, those are the warm colors going in the warm color direction. And then the others are the ones on either side. So if you have your students pick three colors that are analogous, they always blend together beautifully. But if your students just arbitrarily pick random colors like I'm going to do here, you're going to see that the mixing and blending isn't nearly as beautiful. And that's why I encourage analogous One mixing. One of the biggest issues I think that most of us have with chalk is that your students will sometimes take their entire palm of their hand and blend it all in. Well, you've got to teach kids literally everything. And that includes how to use chalk. So my students, I show them a couple of different ways. If we are blending the chalk, just the chalk as it is, then sometimes we can use one finger for blending and we're just blending in a small circle. If students don't like touching the chalk because it is very tactile and some students don't, then we take a tissue from the store, that's where my students gather their supplies, and we make what's called a ghost finger. Oh, scary. And all that is, is just a tissue draped over our finger and we use that to do a little bit of the massaging to blend colors in. Now, when it comes time to change different colors, if they are going with just their finger, obviously they're gonna have to clean their finger in between. And that's why we have a tissue on hand. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but just clean enough for us to start blending another section of color without contaminating it from the other colors or we can just pick a different part of the tissue to do some of that blending. Oftentimes my students will ask if they can go wash their hands or if they can use a sponge to wipe off their finger. And I absolutely say no. We can't wash our hands until art class is completely over. Otherwise they're just gonna be washing our hands like crazy. But not only that, if they do use something like a damp sponge in between, what will happen is their finger is often usually damp and when that dampness touches the chalk, it immediately stops the chalk in its tracks and it's no longer able to blend. When you're using chalk, you wanna use a type of paper that has a little bit of a tooth to it. In fact, if you flip through your art supply catalogs, you'll see that there's some paper specifically designed for chalk use. You probably used some of it when you were in college. And that paper has a little bit of a, a sandpaperish kind of texture, a little bit of a tooth or grab that can grab onto those chalk particles and hold them in place. Now, our art budget doesn't exactly allow for something like that, but there is a kind of paper that you can easily use that does have a little bit of a tooth to it, and that is construction paper. I think construction paper is the best surface to use when it comes to chalk, unless you're gonna do my liquid starch trick, which I'll get to. But the reason I like it is because it has a little bit of the tooth. The other reason I like it is because the dark colors of construction paper, dark blue and black, they really are fun to use with chalk because the colors of the chalk really pop when used on those dark color of papers. So construction paper is my preferred surface when using chalk with my students. One of my favorite ways to use chalk with my students is with something called black glue, but creating black glue by mixing up glue with paint or ink is a true nightmare, and it usually clogs the bottles. So here is a hack for that. Have your students draw their image with a water-based marker, just a regular coloring marker, and then outline it not with school glue, not the junky stuff, but with Elmer's glue all, the thicker stuff. Let it dry overnight and it will create a really nice border for your students to create their chalk picture. And then it makes it so that when your students are blending and mixing, they almost have like a little, I don't know what to call it, like an outline, a really hard outline that kind of keeps everything in place. And it also serves as a really great outline 
for their works of art. I also have them use analogous colors when it comes to projects like this. By the way, this lesson can be found on my YouTube channel, and this is one that I did with my third grade students. I think another reason people do not love using chalk with their students is because of the smear factor. And then there's the question of, well, how do you even set it? What I recommend is good old fashioned Aquanet. You can get spray fixatives in your art supply catalogs. I have found that they're often extremely expensive and really they don't do that different of a job than something like hairspray. So hairspray at your local dollar store works well, but it is by no means perfect. So what I would do is this, get an aerosol can of something like Aquanet, spray it on a test piece of paper just to make sure that the mist is going to come out evenly because sometimes it can come out a little speckled. And just so you know, it is going to come out a little bit speckled on the artwork also. Most of that is going to dry, but it definitely will tend to dim the color of the chalk just a little bit. Not only that, but it's also not going to totally make it smear proof. But hairspray, that's where it's at. Probably for the last 10 years at my school, we have an annual tradition with my second grade students and that's creating chalked ceiling tiles. So this all started when my students were going to do a sidewalk chalk day, but it ended up being rainy that day. So instead, we noticed that the ceiling tiles that my principal had always been encouraging us to create artwork on, actually the back of the ceiling tile has the same texture as a sidewalk. So this is how that day goes down. It usually takes us about an hour and a half to do this. And my students each have their own ceiling tile. It's flipped to the back side. I usually do a guided drawing. Oftentimes it's a video pre-recorded so that I can just press play. My students draw their designs on the chalk and then it's on the ceiling tile with chalk, not big chunks of chalk, just regular chalk like I've been demonstrating with. There it is right there. We then spray them really well with that Aquanet hairspray before my custodian puts them in the ceiling to stay. Since we're talking about chalk, let me share with you another kind of chalk that I really, really love and that is this Prang Free Art Chalk. So the Free Art Chalk comes in these big old chunky blobs and I absolutely love them. But I don't use them oftentimes for students to do their artwork. Instead, I use them for a little something that we call floating chalk prints. For floating chalk prints, all you need is a basin of water. There's literally nothing in the water. I prefer thick chalk, but any chalk would work, but it needs to be a highly pigmented chalk. So sidewalk chalk is not going to do a great job. And then using something like a popsicle stick, I just kind of shave the chalk onto the water. It floats on the surface, press a little piece of paper, or it doesn't have to be little, press a piece of paper onto just the surface of the water. Don't let it submerge. And it will grab the chalk and leave behind this really cool chalk print. You do not have to spray it. You do not have to set it. It'll stay just like that. Now let's talk about combining chalk with liquid starch. I like to use Stay Flow liquid starch. Your students can just go about coloring their project, but instead of blending it in with their finger, they're going to dip their finger in liquid starch and then massage just like they would as if they weren't using liquid starch, as if they were just blending the chalk with their finger. And I always clean my finger before moving on to another color and I encourage them to do the same. What the liquid starch does is it turns this into a really bright and brilliant kind of paint. But the beautiful thing is, is that the starch also makes it so the chalk is now set, meaning that it's not going to smear and you can do things like paint on top of this. This is how I did several of the projects that you can find on my YouTube channel. For example, that tiger project that you saw flash on the screen, as well as a landscape lesson. These always turn out beautiful and the students really enjoy doing this process. And there you have it. Whether you use chalk in like floating chalk prints or you partner your chalk with a little bit of liquid starch for like a totally different look, or you have kids make black glue, which is great for really containing all of the chalk colors that the kids are going to be mixing, no matter what you do. I hope that that has given you some tips to kind of get past that chalk is filthy, dirty, nasty, which it is. But let me just tell you, once your students are introduced to the beauty of blending it, especially when creating something like landscapes or sunrises or sunsets, they are going to be hooked. I hope that helps you to feel a little bit more comfortable with using chalk and with your students in your art room. Bye.